Hey YouTube, this is Detroit Borg with a look at the new Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch e-reader. This is the successor to the first generation e-ink display reader. This also accompanies the Nook Color, so this is going to be sold alongside. It retails for only $139 in Wi-Fi form. Currently there isn't a 3G version available and I'm not sure if one is coming. Now this is a much simpler device uh, than the original Nook. There is no web browser, no speakers, headphone jack. Uh, and quite a few other features like that that also add weight. Uh, so this is just an e-reader. Uh, if you want to use this for other things, you're going to have to hack it. This is running um, uh, Android 2.1, and on top of Android 2.1 is the Barnes & Noble UI. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. So at the bottom we have this uh, little compartment down here, which houses the uh, charger. This is a USB charger and the micro USB cable. We're just going to lift up the cover and there is our nook inside a styrofoam cradle. So underneath that is the instruction booklet which is just a quick start guide on how to use it. So here we have the nook with this ample bezel around the side. You can actually see there are little ridges here which are the page turn buttons and we'll demonstrate that once we get powered up. We have the nook logo embossed up here. We have this little menu key right here. On the back we have this soft grip rubber texture. It's plastic. Back here is the power button. On this side we have a little SD card slot. See that opens up to reveal just a simple SD card slot. So this means you can upgrade storage to up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, there is two, gigabyte, 2 gigabytes of internal storage already that holds up to 1000 books. On the top we have these little fasteners which help to connect the back plate to the nook. And on the bottom same story. And here is the micro USB connector with a little LED light. So the first thing they want us to do is fully charge the Nook. It takes about three hours. So let's go ahead and connect it up and get that going. Now with the power connector you can see we have a little LED light and it's glowing amber right now because it's charging and will be green once it's fully charged. Alright, we're going to power on the Nook for the first time. We're going to hold the power button. So we have our welcome screen and again this is a touch screen so we're going to click next. We can read our agreement here and of course we're just going to agree to that. We're not going to read 178 pages of that. We're going to select our time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone. And now we're checking for Wi-Fi connections. Now I'm going to sign in with my Barnes & Noble account. Okay, we're successful. Click OK. Now we're at our basic home screen here and you can see there are three sections here. We have what we're reading now. Uh, this is my current library or what has recently been added and these are recommendations. Basically the Barnes & Noble top 100 books. Now on the top you see some basic information. Here we have the time, the battery life, the Wi-Fi strength and the current read. So whatever I'm currently reading you just tap that and it will bring you right to it. So let's go ahead and test that out. So there you go, this is the basic manual and what we're going to do is go back home. So in order to get home, all you have to do is press the launcher key down here. And when you tap the menu key, you have your options to go home, go to your library, go to the store, search or settings. So let's go home. So again, that brings me back to the main screen and from here I can launch one of my books. So I can tap to see library and let's just launch Evolution by Stephen Baxter. So you can see I remembered where I last left off, so page 143 of 576. In order to swipe to the next page, just swipe. I want to go back a page, swipe back. Now you can also tap the side of the page to go back, or forward, and tap the left side to go back. You can also use these to go forward. So that's page forward, that's page back, same story here. And if you hold it, you can scan pretty quickly. And you can also swipe your finger pretty quickly. So you can see the refresh rate is pretty fast for e-ink. Now in order to get to some of the options, you just tap the center of the page. Here you can go to content. So here you can see the contents. You can see notes and highlights, bookmarks, etc. You can click close. Let's again tap the center of the page. You can find, so you can search text. So let's search for, I don't know, tree. So page 9, 14, 16, 16, 16, 17, 17, and I'm sure there's a lot of mentions of trees here. So if you want to jump to one of them, let's just tap that. It brings me to the page. And you can see it's highlighted. Again, tap the center. And let's go to. 
So here you have a little scrubber bar. You can basically drag that to a page. And again, hide that by tapping the center of the screen. Tap the center of the screen again to bring up your menu. And here we can change our text. So we can go to larger text. You can also change your line spacing to wider or narrower. You can also change your fonts here. So we have Helvetica. Let's choose Helvetica. And we can also change the margins. So a wider margin or a smaller margin. We're going to close that. Tap the center again. Go to more. So from here you have some social media aspects. You can share this. So you can recommend this on Facebook or Twitter or use one of your contacts. You can also read reviews. You can also write your own review so you just type in a heading. And I have to say the keyboard works very well. This appears to be a uh, resistive touchscreen. It's not capacitive. And just type in your uh, review. This is great. So there you go. We're not going to post that, but that just gives you an idea. And you can see related titles. Now let's take a look at the store. So we're going to go to Shop. You can search by Books. So you can search by Category. Let's do Computers. Let's search. Let's do Apple. So here you see the top search results for Apple and we have a list view here and you can scroll through that list view and you can tap the thumbnail version and actually see the cover artwork. You can see it refreshes pretty quickly. So if we tap that one, Apple script, uh, we can see a free sample and we'll download the free sample, read free sample. We can also select text here. So if we hold our finger over a word, we have uh, it highlighted and we can drag it to select all. So we can do uh, a highlight. So we've highlighted that text. Now let's uh, select trademarks and we're going to add a note. So there you go. You can see I have a little note here. If I tap that note icon, you see my notes. And let's uh, select another word here, written. We're going to go to share. And again, we can share part of that with uh, our contacts, Facebook or Twitter. Or we can also look up, and this will search our dictionary. So registered, here's our dictionary definition. Now let's go to settings. And we can see our device info, wireless. We can uh, manipulate our screen here. So we can do a screen timeout of five minutes, or we can do shorter or longer than that. We have a screen saver here, so we can uh, select uh, nature or authors. We can also add our own screen saver if we upload a JPEG, GIF, PNG, or bitmap. And we also have reader settings, and this is where you can change the behavior of these buttons, whether the top button is page back or page forward. There's also quite a few social aspects to this Nook, so we can uh, link to Facebook, Twitter, and Google. So this is where we would enter those passwords. You can also manage your Nook friends account here. Now this works with your contact list. So if you want to add, uh, invite people through your contacts list to uh, become a Barnes & Noble Nook friend, assuming they have a Barnes & Noble Nook account, this is where you would see those requests. So the advantage to being a Barnes & Noble Nook friend is that they can borrow one of your books for a limited time. You can also see what your Nook friends are reading and vice versa. So there's some social aspects to it, just like Facebook. You can also manage the visibility of your library to your Nook friends. So if you don't want them to see certain books you're reading and you don't want them to borrow them, uh, you can manage that here. And it's important to note that not all books are lendable. That, again, that has to be authorized by the publisher. So uh, I actually don't have any that are lendable. Actually, I don't think I've ever purchased a book that I could lend out. So anyway, uh, that's a possibility for some books. Now to wake the Nook, just press the Nook key or menu key and you have a swipe to unlock feature here. So again, that's just very similar to an iOS device. It brings you right to where you left off, which is my book. Now if we compare the Nook Simple Touch to the Kindle 3 and the original Nook, you can see there's quite a bit 
different in terms of their dimensionality. Uh, the new Nook is 7.6 ounces, this is 7.8 ounces, and this is over 12 ounces. So this is quite a bit heavier. Both of these devices are actually more fully featured with the exception of the touchscreen. Uh, so these actually had speakers, headphone jacks, uh, you could play music, you could browse the web, that sort of thing. But with the Kindle or with the new Nook, simple touch, none of that's possible. It's just a bookstore and uh, an ebook reader. Now besides the frame and all the features bolted onto it, you can see they have the same size screen. They're both six inch uh, e-ink screens. The touch screen doesn't seem to affect the readability at all. They look exactly the same. Uh, now it's, it's a little sharper than the original Nook. You can see it's a little darker, it's a little muddier. So there's a higher contrast ratio on both these devices. If I were to compare these two, they look identical. I don't think there's any, any difference. Now if we compare the new Nook to the old Nook, you can see the old Nook was a bit thicker. You can see, of course, the, the old Nook also had those rails along the side to grip onto it. So ergonomics has always been important to the Nook design. You can see the same characteristic here. But again, if you look at the bottom again, you can see there's quite a few less features here evident. There's no speakers or headphone jack. Same at the again. top, we have the power button up here. And this time the power button is on the back of the device. Now if we look at the Kindle 3 versus the Nook again, you can see the new Nook is thinner. Uh, there are a few more features on the Kindle 3 again. You see these, um, there's a headphone jack. There's also speakers on the back. They both feature this soft plastic or soft touch material for grippability. But of course the Kindle is flat on the back versus the cup design of the new Nook. The only thing I can really complain about on the Nook is the fact that, that there is a deeper ridge here than I would like to see. I'd like to see this more flush. So if you look at the Kindle 3, it's almost completely flush. I prefer that. It's easier to clean. It just looks better. Now we're just going to test the speed of the ink display. This is where things have improved a lot since the original Nook. So let's just tap the page forward. Now speed doesn't seem to be the issue here, but you can see that this screen flashes every time it has to refresh the entire page. The new Nook uh, with the latest ink display doesn't have to do that. Now it looks like they're about the same speed, so let's just hold down the button and see what happens. Now you can see there's a huge difference here. You can speed through this a lot faster. You can't do that on the original Nook. If I hold down the button, nothing happens. I basically have to keep tapping it. Now let's compare the Kindle 3 to the new Nook. Actually, it looks like the Kindle 3 is faster, but you can see the difference here. Again, the Kindle 3 has to flash to refresh the page. Now let's uh, see if we can do a speed forward. Again, the Kindle 3 cannot do that. Now again, speed isn't the issue here. It's the fact that the Kindle 3 has to flash the entire page in negative in order to refresh the entire e-ink display. This does not have to do that. Overall, I can absolutely say that the new Nook is the best e-ink device on this table. I think it's got to be the best device out there. It's the only really good touch display besides the Sony e-readers. But this is very cheap, only, only $139, so it's similarly priced to the Kindle 3. It's a lot cheaper than the original Nook. You do lose some features. Yeah. Nobody's going to really want to browse the web with these things because the e-ink technology is poor for that. So they've eliminated those features. They've made an incredible battery life. This lasts for two months. This lasts for one month. This doesn't last that long. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, this is definitely a superior device, I think, for an e-ink e reader. It's lighter weight. It's more ergonomic to hold and handle. It's well balanced, has a nice grippable surface on the back. I also think the UI is much better on this. Again, having touch on a device is far superior to having physical keys. And this sort of interface I think was better and more flexible than the Kindle 3. Uh, but still, it's a little clunky and you, most people are used to touching screens now. So this was still something hard to get used to and never was really intuitive. I wouldn't recommend this for everybody. And in reality, if you want a more fully featured device, really the device to get is the Nook Color. I really like this device. I think it's bad for reading anything. I don't really like reading, reading on LCD displays at all. Uh, but this is a great little tablet, and if you like having a little more functionality, such as web browsing, this is a way to go. This is $249, uh, so it, it, you can get this pretty cheap. So you have the best of both worlds in the Nook universe. So once again, guys, this is Detroit Borg taking a look at the new second-generation Nook Simple Touch e-reader. Thanks for watching. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look.